And for those of us who don't get to sit in beautiful racing cars the whole time, part of the joy of these things is how cool the cabin is. Look at this steering wheel, okay? Um, it's unlike anything I've used before, because it's all about ohms and isolation and voltage. The way it works is this. You have three positions, obviously no ignition, no nothing. You just have P1 and P2. P1 is like a standby, it's the first key on the ignition. And that lights everything up and it gives you some idea of the fact that we've got 13 volts and all the other stuff that's going on. When you put it into P2, you then have to wait and press this rather worrying looking red cow button called HV enable, that's high voltage. So that gives us all the power. These things then light up. And at that point, you just put your foot on the brake, press the neutral button, and then press the drive button to go, come back to neutral and press reverse. I mean, it's that simple. We've got nine levels of traction control. I was on about seven. Um, and then after that, it's just away. You've got a radio button and get on with it. It's actually quite simple. And then you end up with a page like that. That speed number tends to worry you because it's quite high and the state of charge starts at 100 and depletes down to naught. Um, that's simple. and uh, the special features in the interiors, uh, we did a good job. I like very much wood and uh, it's a very important part in this interior. Special with this wood, we have include a, an, a sense of flow technology. It means that an LED um, project um, to all icons through the wood and via touch screen you can activate all the icons. Through the capacitive sensor I can only touch it and the sensor will activate it. Okay, first of all, this is what you've heard about, the giant 17-inch central LCD that is the heart of this car's cabin. Across the top, you've got a static ribbon, very much like you have on a lot of mobile devices. If I go to media, I get my media choices. They show up down here, AM, FM, HD radio, XM satellite. You've also got two supported streaming services now, TuneIn and Slacker. It's all software, they can add many more, but right now those are your choices on streaming. Notice how everything here is popping into a contextually relevant screen as I hit it. For example, here are my tone controls, and the kind of data and interface you get here, you just don't see in any other car. Notice the nav, that's Google Maps. It's also where your navigation takes place, although I should point out an important distinction. The mapping is Google Maps, the navigation technology is Garmin. This is not yet using Google turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Now, Tesla promises voice to destination in 2013. For now, you can just enter stuff on the screen, even when the car's moving. A cheeky approach, but they hope you'll have the passenger do it, actually. That also applies even more unusually to the web browser. First of all, it's unusual to get a big web browser in a car. Unusual, hell, it's unheard of. And to have this thing work while the car is moving is also very Silicon Valley. Camera is interesting. Another one of these places where Tesla is kind of breaking convention. Here's my rear camera. I'm not in reverse. And if I start driving, this camera can stay on. Another interesting wrinkle, you can have a standard def camera, or in this case, we have the high def camera. Look at that resolution. What they have in resolution, they do not have in around view cameras or multiple angle rear view cameras. Now, more broadly here in the cabin, what's it like to sit in a Model S? Obviously, it's a very modern feeling because you're not showered with a lot of buttons. The screen takes that, of course. I also notice an interesting thing here. 
Tesla doesn't make every single part of their car. They've gone to the Mercedes parts bin to get things like the cruise control, the turn signals and wipers, and the gear shift selector up here. If you gotta go buy, buy from the best. Now, wireless keys are nothing new in this day and age, even fancy ones, but this one goes to the level of cute. To unlock or lock the car, you press on the roof. To unlock or lock the front trunk or frunk, you press on it. Same thing goes for the rear. This futuristic EV concept is Toyota's vision of the future of driving. With Generation Z who have grown up with the internet as the target audience, the whole body and interior is an internet-connected display. で、the Toyota FunV software for driving control and multimedia is updated continually online. By connecting to nearby cars and to satellites, you can communicate with other friends' cars, blind spots at intersections can be perceived in advance, and the car is able to drive itself to destinations. あの、我々からこう作り出すことができるかということで、いろんなデバイスを考えております。例えば映像を一つ作ったんですが、そのモニターと実際に走る走行シーンをバーチャルレースという形で楽しめるんではないかなということで、ゆっくり走りながらも映像だけ